Uh, welcome everyone to ICMR STS 2024 orientation. First of all, let me thank ECO for supporting this online session. We are very much thankful to uh, our Deputy Director, Dr. Jasmine Gwan, sir, for sparing his time and gracing this occasion. So today we are going to discuss uh, how to apply, what are the new things we have to keep in mind. Uh, again, I am requesting everyone to please keep yourself muted. I would also like to welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Jay Solanki, a uh, very renowned, we can say ICMR STS specialist, I will uh, say in that sense, because there are a lot many ICMR STS students uh, under him, uh, he has uh, prepared. So, uh, Without taking much time, I request our Deputy Director, Dr. Jasmine Diwan, sir, uh, to say a few words and uh, grace us. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Chinmay. I hope I am audible. Yes, sir, audible. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, I welcome all of you. Yes. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, first of all, I welcome all of you. And congratulations to uh, Dr. Chinmay Shah and uh, Dr. Jayesh D. Solanki and the whole team that is every year uh, we are organizing kind of a uh, online seminars for the students, specifically for preparing them for ICMR STS projects. Uh, because this is related to the medical students and especially for the first MBBS, second MBBS, and up to now, final year was also allowed, but from this. This year it is only restrict concept. They don't know how to apply, what are the procedures. So this kind of a uh, <clears throat> online seminar is helpful to all the students and those who are specifically interested for research work. Because all of you know that first MBBS, second MBBS and our final MBBS, you all are studying and doing uh, <clears throat> your work related to studies you don't know how to do research you and what are the steps to research so this aim of this program the main objective of this program is to give you an opportunity specifically the mbbs students uh, to familiarize yourself for the research methodology and the techniques uh, this will be a very short duration program and during this you will be uh, you will have a guide who is your uh, teacher you can get it from first mbbs second mbbs or maybe a final mbbs depending on your topic and you can if you are from first mbbs you can talk to your first year uh, professor they will help you to get connected with your second mbbs or final mbbs professors so they will guide you as i told you very short duration uh, program and you can take part by ongoing taking part in an ongoing research program or you can start your uh, independent project so today with this orientation program uh, sts project this is totally online project so you don't need any offline or you have to print get the things print and you have to send it to Delhi it is not like that so it is totally online you can see it at your home at your college library and you can apply it so for that what are the steps you are supposed to do how you can select the projects how you can do analysis everything will be covered during this sessions of seminars so today because it's the first seminar of this session uh, we will guide you how to 
uh, formulate a research proposal, uh, how to select a research proposal, and how to register with the STS project. This project is being run since 1979 by ICMR, and uh, some of your seniors may have also taken part into this proje uh, projects also. So you can talk to your seniors also. What uh, what were their challenges? What were uh, what did they learn from this uh, uh, STS project? And the, the students, it is a good opportunity to interact with your uh, uh, teacher who, who will be your guide. He will help you to prepare the uh, research question. He will help you to get the data collection, even analysis, and to publish it also. Once you complete your project, you can publish it also in a good journal. So that you can achieve it during your studentship only. So this is, as I told you, will give you an opportunity or you can say get an insight into the uh, research methodology. And not only will help you in your studies also, but it will help you to build your CV. Because uh, we know students are interested to go uh, uh, abroad also. So if you are interested to go to abroad, you can definitely apply to this STS project. And another thing that even if your project is not selected by ICMR. You can you can continue and try to complete the project and try to get it published in a better journal. So that also will help you to uh, uh, this uh, get an understanding of research methodology and techniques. So with this, a very small brief, uh, not taking much time. I am just. Uh, 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 will leave you with the main topic of today that I an overview of ICMR STS 2024. Dr. Chinmay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for your encouraging words. And you have given a gist of what we are going to discuss today. Uh, so now I request Dr. Uh, Jayesh to please start the session. Uh, Dr. Jayesh, can you share your screen? Yes, we can see the screen. Yes, sir. Is it visible, sir? Yeah, screen is visible. You have to open the PPT. Uh, whole screen is right now visible. So I'm uh, very much thankful to my gurus from whom I learned how to even start PC. Chinmay sir will be knowing this. And this is a good sort of guru shishya relationship when we come together for research. And uh, sir, with your permission, I am about to start the session. Yeah, uh, actually, still the PPT is not visible. We are able to see uh, the your pen drive only. Yes, sir. All the content of your pen drive. So yes, if required, sir. you can unshare and then reshare whole screen. Yes, uh, I request, sir, first please open your uh, the PPT. And then after that, you can share your screen. Please uh, stop sharing the screen once again and then restart sharing. Only double click and it will be open. <laughs> Visible, sir. Not yet. No. Uh, answer karna ho, pehla answer karo. Now, now visible, now visible. Can you go yes. to the next slide? Yes. 
Uh, can you go to the next slide? Okay. Okay, go to the next slide. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, done. Continue. Uh, so, thank you, sir, for kind words. And uh, as it is now onward, the program only for first and second year MBBA students, I will try to keep it simple. Uh, I have learned all these basics of research from two of my gurus. So, I will share you my experience and STS is a nice co-curricular activity apart from those other activities. Nice to of Dr. Jay Solanki, a uh, lecturer in GMC Bhavnagar. And I will just sensitize you about the ICMR STS and so many new changes have taken place from this year onwards. So it is also a learning experience for we people also. So, as uh, just me says, STS is a paperless online program uh, started in the year 1979. And the main aim of this was to promote the interest and aptitude for research in medical undergraduates. The main objective of this program is to provide opportunity to undergraduate medical students to familiarize themselves with research methodology and techniques. And for that, they are associated for a short duration with seniors on ongoing project or by taking their independent projects. So it is a project where we need a student. The UG student is a part of any MCI or we can say NMC recognized college. Student cannot do project independently. He needs a guide and a guide should be a full-time faculty from this MC recognized college. Topic, the topic of research should not include clinical trial. And the norm is that one student can work under only one guide and one topic. So for example, if a student has duplication of entry, or if one guide is uh, giving two proposal, it will be rejected outright. So one student, one guide, one topic. Change in guide, is it possible? Answer is yes. Remember from this year onwards, the project is stretched for a span of two years. So if your guide is say, for example, uh, change to some other places or say some other reason, you can change the guide, but that you have to mention at the time of report submission. And it will go like this. So you made a proposal and then you take the approval from ethical committee of your college. Remember, previously it was not necessary, but now at the time of submission of proposal, you have also to attach the approval from your ethical committee of college. Each college has its own IRB committee, which reviews the proposal and without the permission of those committee, it is not going to be accepted. And then you do the project. The facility of that project and the cost, it must be borne by the institution. So it is better to keep all the details ready before filling the form. And the deadline is 30 June, but believe me, at 30 June, there will be just a lot of hurry and worry and all inside maybe jam. So better to get it done before 30 June itself. So these are the steps. You make a proposal. Proposal is your plan, your blueprint. Okay. Then out of those all proposal, few will be selected proposal. Result will be published online. After that, you can start your project work. After finishing project work, you just make a report of your results and conclusion and all. You submit it and once again, ICMR will approve it if it is appropriate. Previously, I think there were no such criteria from last year onwards. They have given the category A, B, C, D, E. So A means the best and E means uh, it is there to be rejected. So remember, if your proposal is selected, that doesn't mean that you will get certificate and stipend. You have to make your proposal, project, your work look better. So I always refer this to all the students that our research is a cycle of four P's. So you start with first P that is proposal. You make your plan, your blueprint, what you want to do. Then you do the project, you work on it. It can be STS or any other. But after doing the project, your work is half finished because then you have to do the presentation of your work as a paper or poster in some conferences. And the most important step is dissemination of your result in a journal in the form of publication. So proposal, project, 
presentation, publication, this is the whole research cycle. Okay, so this is only the half work. So eligibility, which students can apply. So only the first and second year professional year, MBBS or BDS students studying in NMC or DCI recognized medical or dental colleges in India before they appear in their fourth year final exams are eligible to apply. Previously, it was applicable for all the four year, but from this year onward, I don't know the reason, they've just given only first and second year students. Okay, if it is selected in your first year, you have to do the work from first to third MBBS, and it is in second year from second to fourth. So previously it was a span of six months, but now the span is of two years. Suppose if you get your project selected, it will take two years in patches to complete your work. Students who are holding OCI cards, PIO cards, NRI in Indian medical dental colleges can also apply, but these cards must be submitted as other document. The thing is third and fourth year MBBS or BDS students, interns in PG are not eligible for STS. So third and fourth year students are debarred from this year. Students of other paramedical or non-medical courses are also not eligible. Students studying in foreign medical or dental colleges are also not eligible. This is about the criteria for students. For guide, only regular full-time faculty members working in the same medical or dental college where the student is enrolled, only that can act as a guide. The part-time consultants or the visiting faculty, contextual staff, residents, tutors, pool officers, or PG student cannot be guided. This is the most uh, difficult thing because in most of the colleges, we have so many students to do research, but you can only have a full-time faculty as a guide. Numbers. So it is 2% of the total medical seat. That is 2,000 is a total number given as STS from this year. Out of these 2,000 STS, 80% will be given to MBPS and 20% will be given to the BDS student, okay? And as I said, it is only for the first and second year MBBS students. And the thing is, the most disheartening thing is, remember all the proposal will not be selected as only 2000 out of which you can get 80% means 1600 will be the total uh, allowed. So less than 10% is a chance of being accepted, but still make it best so that it comes within this 10%. Tenure, in what time you are supposed to finish. So the selected students will be carrying out the proposed research work under, well, during the summer break of two months for three consecutive years. This is summer break, but remember it will not be applicable. Okay, so total tenure will be six months. So two plus two plus two, we have such three spans of work. So they have just given the timeline over here. Say in the first summer break of first two months, you can say, say in between first and second MBBS, first and second year, you can make the concept, develop and submit your, they've used this word from this year, research concept note. Research concept note is nothing but your proposal. So proposal is refined as research concept note. Proposal means what you want to do. Then the second summer break, between the second and third year, you have to do the data collection. Data collection to answer your research question, data collection. In the third summer break, there is in between third and fourth year, analysis of data, preparation and submission of your completed report. So these are the three, two months plans for the overall project. Uh, what is the monetary benefit? So the stipend is given rupees 60,000 from this year. Last year it was 50,000 when we started in 2012 or so. It was just 10,000. So the number of students are still same, but the stipend has been increased. Okay, but this is given for six months. And remember, the most important thing will be this e-certificate. This e-certificate will be issued in the name of student only. Student only. Okay, and the stipend will be given in three installments that I will be telling you now. So the 60,000, if your proposal goes well till the report approval, First installment of rupees 50,000 at the end of first year of your work upon submission and review of research concept note. That is your proposal. Only to selected students. Okay. So those 
whose proposals are selected will get this at the end end of one year. Remember, they have not clarified everything, so we have to keep following the guidelines from STS. But according to me, this, this is nothing but the research concept not means the proposal, selected proposal. Then second installment, so once it is selected, you will get another rupees 15,000 at the end of second year of work upon submission of interim report. Interim report means data collection. So this is the halfway. You have done the half report. You just try to give a summary of data collection and that report will, once again, if approved, you will get 15,000. And third and final installment of remaining 50%, 30,000, at the end of third year of work, when we submit, when you submit your final report. Okay, report, once again, it includes everything, analysis of data and result and everything. Okay, so 15,000 for proposal, if selected at the end of one year, another 15,000 interim report of data collection, and the remaining 30,000 once you have done the final reporting. 15 plus 15 plus 30. And remember, this is new to us also. So we cannot exactly tell you how it will go live, but the money is directly deposited in the account of student. Okay, so this is the monetary benefit to student. Now, how the selection process takes place? So as I said, it is a fully online program. No submission of hard copies. Everything has to be submitted online only. Student is first required to register and submit the application form and the research concept note, which is your proposal. It is done online as per call, which will be evaluated by reviewers. So once you send your proposal, it will be evaluated by reviewers. If selected, student is expected to complete the project in next two years, in every summer break, as mentioned in the tenure above, as I have mentioned, and they have to submit the concept note and both final report as per timeline. So first, Concept note, then data collection interim report, and third is final report. Student will be awarded third or final installment, that is 30,000, only if his or her final report is approved. The host institute, that is medical or dental college, and the guide, they must take overall responsibility for the conduct of the research because students are novice, so they need your help. So you have to help them in project, preparation of report and submission also, okay? Plus you have to make sure that there is nothing wrong when they do the enclosure. Second year data collection report should be verified and reviewed by the guide. Only then it should be submitted. Award of STS fellowship will be subject to technical evaluation of final report. Remember, your report may be rejected. So once it is selected, that is not taken for granted. You have to work well, else they may reject also. As I said, from last year onward, they are giving the grades A, B, C, D, E. And if it is E grade, they may not approve your report. Results of only successful candidates will be notified on the DHR ICMR website. This is another new thing from this year. So, so far, the whole procedure was done on ICMR website, but now it is done on this DHR. So I will explain what is this DHR ICMR is. So once again, the steps, let me revise. So first you will do registration online by student to get the registration credential. With the help of guide, you will make a proposal. Then you will submit your proposal online. Then the ball will be in the core of ICMR. They will review the application. Application result will be declared by ICMR. Once it is done, you do your research project. You make a report as per the STS guideline. Then you submit the report in the prescribed format. Then once again, it will be reviewed by ICMR. Results of that report will be issued. And then the stipend dispatch and the certificate dispatch. So it is a long journey. And hence, they have chosen only the first and second year MBBS student because the journey lasts for two years at least. So first step is online registration. Okay. So you have to get the login details, students course details, and students personal details. So the new thing is this one. Remember, the portal of online registration is not the ICMR site itself. It is now shifted to something else. After registration, yes, you will give a, be given a password and the reference ID. So remember, whenever you want to correspond with respect to your proposal or report, you have to mention this number of your reference ID of your proposal. Okay, 
it will be generated automatically and it will be sent to the student by email. So login ID will be your email and reference ID will be that number given to your proposal. Student will require this reference ID and email at the time of report submission. Therefore, this must be noted down carefully. So whenever you get all this, you better share it with your guide. So it is not lost anywhere. So this is the new thing. So from now on, the portal will be this DHR EPMS portal. That is Department of Health Research. You can see over here on this home page, you will get this DHR EPMS, that is Project Management System Portal. Okay, so to click this link, and then when you click, you will find this DHR EPMS that you are supposed to click, and then you have to click on register. Okay, you have to click on register if you are a new user, and then you will get your ID password. So this is how it will appear when you click. If you have ID password, you can start using from here on. If not, you can register from here. Suppose if you are going for a new registration, then you, they will ask you to furnish these details, the full name, email, mobile number, password, uh, write this password somewhere else, confirm password and enter this capture and then you will be able to register. Once you get all these things, you will get, so once register, you will be landing on dashboard page, then you will have this thing, you have to click on verify email and you have to go to register email ID. So suppose if you click over here, you will get this link that you have to activate, okay, from your email. Only then it will be processed further, like this. Once your email is verified, your dashboard looks like this, email verified. So you have to once again go through this DHR EPMS website, then you have to click on register, over there, as you are new, model register, model you participant, you have to go to the register. You have to fill in this detail. You have to enter register, and then you have to verify the link, and then you can start using it. Okay. Once you start using it, whenever you go on this, when you click DHRE PMS, you can go on to this proposal submission. So suppose now we registered. The further procedure will be done by clicking on this, and you have to click on this. Proposal submission. When you click it, you will get these options. You have to once again click on this HRD. You have to click on this HRD. And in HRD, this will be the various research programs sponsored by this HRD department. Okay. So out of this, once again, you have to click on the first one that is short term studentship. And the deadline over here is 30 June. You have to apply, you have to click this over here. As you click, you will go to this kind of dashboard. And remember, as I have just already registered, you can see now it will be as per my reference ID. Just see my reference ID is STS 20240568. And then you have to fill in this for your proposal submission. So your proposal submission is in four part, A, B, C, D. So one by one, you have to fill all the details then you have to preview and submit it. So there are four parts, A, B, C, D. Okay, so the part A. So first you fill in the part A, that is registration detail. So this is once again, part A, registration detail about student. Part B is detail of the guide, about the guide. Part C is attachment, PDF attachment. And part D is your proposal. When you do all these things, you can preview and you can finalize for submission. Suppose if you click part A, so part A will ask you about all your details, starting from email ID, mobile number, alternate email ID, you always give of your guide, of your guide. Okay, you have to write everything, your name, course, professional year, date of joining your MBBS course, name of college, address, gender, nationality, date of birth. Okay, everything as per this. This is the part A, student's detail. Part B, once you want to fill in the part A, it will go to part B. And part B is pertaining to the details of the guide. So once again, you have to, before you submit this, plus you just ask all this detail to your guide because your guide may be busy and you cannot ask your guide in between all these things. So you have to ask all these things, his name, designation, you have to select from this drop, drop box, then name of department, name of college and address line. 
state, city, pin code, everything. Okay. And you have to give the email address of the guide. So you have to ask your guide about all these things. Only then you can submit. So when you submit this part B of details of guide, you will go to part C. Now part C is about enclosure or attachment. Now these are the possible attachment. One, two, three, four, five, six. Out of this, these two are mandatory. Until you don't attach this thing, the thing will not go further to part D. So the two thing which is mandatory is application attestation form. The blank application attestation form is available from the website that you have to get fill in, get signed, and you have to convert it into PDF up to 1 MB and you have to upload over here application attestation form. Second thing, which is I think more important is you have to get a certificate from ethics committee approval. Remember, this is 30 June deadline. So you have to ask your local body or college to get ethical committee approval. That is given a number, the stamp of the ethical committee and that certificate also you have to attach over here. These things are optionals. Informed consent form, case study form, if you have some study questionnaire, any other document, but these two things are must. Application, attestation form, signed by student, guide, HOD and dean, and the ethical committee approval certificate certified by the institutional ethical committee or IRB committee of college. If you don't submit this, remember your proposal will not go further. So get it done before you submit. Now, once you go to part D, so part D is your project or proposal proper. Okay, you have to first mention here the title of your study. You have to copy paste the title, type of study, from the drop box, subject area, which uh, part, which type of study, uh, subject area it is, name of department, where the study will be conducted. And last thing is research proposal. Okay, size should be less than one MB. So title, type, subject area, and all these things are essential. Okay, proposal should be less than one MB, and it has some guidelines that I will tell you afterwards. So these are the four parts, A for student details, B for guide details, C for the two attachment or some extra, and fourth is for your proposal attachment. Okay. So as I said, these two are the mandatory thing, application attestation form and ethics committee approval form. So this is how the application attestation form looks like. You have to write all the details, including name, title, everything. And then you have to get it signed at four places, signature of student, okay, signature of the guide, signature of the head of department, and signature of dean. It should be signed, it should be stamped, and it should be converted into PDF with size less than 1 MB. The blank format is available from the website, okay. So you have to get this application attached. This means that you are now officially given a green signal from the college. So this is the application attestation form. And second thing is institutional review board IRB certificate, human ethical committee. So in our college, we have registered IRB committee. So just see, you will give you given a certificate like this with a stamp and IRB number and photo and all the details. Until you are, if you're not attaching this, it means your study is not ethically approved by college itself. So STS will not consider it further. So this application, attestation form and this IB certificate are mandatory things. You can also attach this case record form. I've given a sample over here. Case record form includes all the details of each and every participant that you are supposed to mark in. Informed consent form. There are information about the project given to the participant. These are not mandatory. Okay, so this is how you should register and then you go for ABCD uh, submission of proposal. But what the proposal is so remember there are so many proposals you have to make your proposal best only then it will be accepted okay so this is the standard format of proposal submission font should be times new roman font size 12 single line spacing and it should be justified okay there are certain word limits the stated word limits okay for guiding the students, but you may exceed only 100 words, okay? And for title, you can go more than 25 words, okay? So remember, you have 
have to make the proposal not too long. Okay, I will tell you the word limit. So times two Roman, font size 12, single spacing, justified. And you have to only send the PDF version of your proposal, okay? Proposal is a document which answers this question to the reviewer that who will do, okay, why will do, when, where, and what. Your who is not there because you will not tell your name, okay? Otherwise, you have to answer these questions, okay, is that why you're doing the research and all. So these are the four questions you are supposed to answer. Why the study that you have to write in your introduction, what is known, what is the literature, and why you want to do this study. That is introduction. What you want to do exactly, there is a study title and objectives. How, who will do, when, and where. That is methodology. Okay. What things you will do, on whom, by what thing you will evaluate. And so what? That is implication. Implication means what is the relevance of this study? Why should STS select your proposal? Okay. So all these things are answered in your proposal. So this is the standard guideline about the proposal. Your study proposal should have this many heading, starting with reference ID. As I said, you are not supposed to mention any of your identifying detail. Rather, you have to give the reference ID number over here, then the title, heading, 25 words, introduction, why the study, 300 words, objective, the steps of your study, 100 words, methodology, 800 words. This is the most important part of your proposal, okay? Because this is what you are going to modify as per yourself. Implication, why it is important, 100 words, and references. Remember, you should use the references, standard references, and better if you choose the reference from PubMed Index Journal. Okay, so you should not use non-index journal. Use the reference from PubMed Index Journal. Okay, these are the headings. I will just sensitize. The further detail will be given in other future webinars, but these are the headings of your proposal. Okay, as I said, word limit is flexible. Student is free to choose a topic depending on his or her interest in consultation with guide. As I said, no name or contact details, say telephone number, email, should be provided in the proposal. Proposal should be free of any identifying detail. Proposal would be, as I said, automatically ejected if any identifying information of student or guide or even institution is given. Okay, reference ID, as I said, always provide Reference ID at the top of anything, proposal or report. Okay. Identifying information like name of student guide, contact details, contact number, this should be avoided. Okay. This is the thing how you should mention your reference ID. Even when you matlab, attest the document, you matlab, name like this, that AAF 0, for example, 3053. Okay. IRB certificate 03053. Don't write your name even in the name of the document. Use this reference ID rather. Okay. Proposal or project should not have as the same thing I am saying. Okay. All these things. Now, what type of study you can take? Types of study. So, better is your guide who can tell you about these types of study. It can be clinical investigation. It can be epidemiological investigation or when you are doing some field study going to outside the institution, field operation research, something pertaining to health, literacy, health, education, or a laboratory investigation, product development, if something new has been developed, a therapy, management, or any other. Okay, so all these are available on the dropout menu during the proposal submission, and your guide will be in a better position to guide it. But do not try to have clinical trial and also consider the feasibility. Sometimes your topic is very interesting, but your institution is not able to sustain it further. So once it is selected, if you are not able to finish it, it is not the right thing. So look for the feasibility of your topic as well. Subject area, it is listed well on the website. Okay, so these are some of the areas of research which is suggested, which is suggested by the ICMR. Okay, on its website. You can choose any of this. Now, what are the benefits to student? So as I have already 
I am saying uh, 12 to 13 STS project I have already guided. So student has a lot of benefit. First of all, he will he or she will get research experience, which is otherwise not going to be there. A very precious certificate from ICMR. One of my students, I think she just got a PG at USA. And she said that this certificate put a lot of value to her CV. Stipend, 60,000. It was initially 10,000. You will get 60,000. It is a good co-curricular activity, which will help you to do better in your studies also. You will learn certain soft skills like communication, computer skill, how to deal with public and all those things. As I said, your CV will be strong, especially if you want to apply as a foreign postgraduate. And there is no higher institution than ICMR to authenticate that you have done some research. And who knows, you may be motivated to find a career in research also. And yes, we all UG students want to do a PG. In PG, thesis or dissertation is mandatory. If you have some experience in your UG, it will also help you in your PG thesis also, because you are not novice at that time. So these are the benefit to student, benefit to guide or your teacher. So the certificate will bear the name of guide, which they can frame and keep in their office. Okay, it is counted as a funded research against the faculty also. Many young teachers are there, like AP and tutor, they don't have PG student. But sometimes the UG student, they are as good as PG student, and this guru sister relationship can go for two years. We all faculties, and we always are in a search of research partner. So we may get a research partner, and as we say, Tari do se bachti hai. So we can get a nice combo. Project bank. Sometimes when you make proposal, in, if your proposal is not selected, you can keep them as a departmental project bank that you can modify, revise, resubmit, and you can further improvise. It will build research abilities within you because doing project with UG student is a totally different experience than doing yourself. It can justify the R of research. So whatever college we are, we always use the word DMER or GMERS. So you can justify the R of research as a faculty and you will feel proud for that. Yes, it will help in promotion and publication and more visibility among your peers and your colleagues. Now, this is one of the mistakes being done by students. So when you submit the proposal, you have to attach application attestation form. There is a similar form known as report attestation form that you have to uh, attach at the time of report. So remember, this is at the time of proposal, and this is at the time of report. The basic difference is that in application attestation form, you need four signatures, student, guide, head of department, and team. But when you are submitting the attestation form of your report, you just need the sign of student and guide. So never matlab, uh, misplace these things in your proposal. So this is all I have to say. Uh, thank you all. Over to you, Chinmay sir. Sir, your mic is muted and we are not able to hear you. Could you please unmute yourself. Yes, the recording will be shared later on. Uh, sir, let me help you with the, this uh, unmute thing. Yes, now please click on this uh, mic button on the left side okay. of the corner. Yes, sir. So audible now? Okay. Yes, now audible. Please share your screen once again. 
Okay. So the question is whether the students of physiotherapy can sir, do sir, or not. Uh, request you to please share your screen once again because screen is not visible. Hello. The PPT is not visible actually. Screen share karo हाँ जी सर स्क्रीन विजिबल है ओनली आपको अनम्यूट करना है जैसे आपकी आवाज आए प्रॉपर आई मीन यू हैव टू अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ ओके सर डन डन या नाउ इट इज ऑडिबल प्लीज पुट इट ऑन स्लाइड सो मोड नो नो प्रॉब्लम सर इट्स विजिबल नाउ प्लीज स्टार्ट वेयर यू हैव लेफ्ट द लास्ट स्लाइड हेलो हाय डॉक्टर चिन so uh, let me go through some of the question from chat so many queries i can see first is about as i said the students of physiotherapy uh where whether they can apply or not so i think students of physiotherapy uh, they are not uh, allowed in this but yes they can uh, be part of some of the research also because uh, research is a big thing and sts is not the only thing for research i will surely share this uh, with the help of chinmay sir uh, students is saying that he is in third year so can't he apply for it now so sorry dear i too have the same concern that why third and fourth year students are debarred but uh, it is what uh, they have written so we cannot matlab violate that rule then question from a guide is name of guide should be included in the certificate given to student lot of support is put in by the faculty guide so i think that all four proposal which i had it had that name of guide in uh, them i don't know what is there recently but surely it should be there and uh, if this is not so then we can uh, write to icmr also And the question is, sir, can you please tell again about yeah. categories into yeah. which the proposal will be labeled? So category means that uh, not proposal, it is a category of report. So when you submit your report, they have certain category like A, B, C, D, E, depending on how sound your research is. Okay, so A is the best report, and E is matlab about to be rejected. So that is decided by STS. so far this year they have not uh, mentioned in their website but last year the proposal uh, was there but after the proposal is converted into report they were evaluating the report as abc uh just to share there are a few questions regarding guide seek also that right now they are under discussion uh, that tutor also can become guide or not uh, sr is definitely going to uh, not going to become a guide so for tutor also previously they have denied but now uh, uh, they have uh, thought that now they will just discuss and update on the website secondly only first year and second year only become a part of uh, this icmr sts third year onwards will not be able to become a part of this icmr sts uh, then one question was regarding uh, muhs yes you can submit it but you will see that you are not availing any grants uh, from two places for one research so there should not be like that you are it's like a cheating uh, grant agency when you have applied to one place for grant don't apply to uh, at two place sir my question to you chinme sir about this uh, iib certificate so i think all the colleges should uh, take the initiative to get iib approval to all these yes, projects yes actually uh, when there was a meeting with icmr uh, icmr of people they said that this year they have made it compulsory so all colleges are requested to i have a special meeting for icmr uh, uh, applying student and issue them a uh, icmr certificate 
so that they can apply uh, at ICMR for this ICMR STS. Uh, regarding funds, funds to be uh, given by either department or college because ICMR is not going to be a fund. Uh, submit uh, ethical committee submission you have to do as per your university guideline. And as I said, your college has to create a separate uh, meeting uh, to give them uh, uh, a certificate as early as possible. Uh, yes, question is, you have prepared it for two months. Now you have to prepare it for six now months. Are showing that that person showed a against the other three. Yeah. Uh, Jayesh, Dr. Jayesh, you can answer other questions. Yes, sir. If required, no. Yes, sir. Well, there are certain questions like if I am applying in first year, can I apply in second year? So, yes, dear, you can apply. But it is not as easy to get it uh, selected twice. What does case study form mean? So, the case study form means it is a, we can say, pro forma of all the details of the participant that you have to fill in. It is not mandatory, so I did not go into detail. But case study form is a kind of, we can say, form where you have to write all the data from every study participant okay, and that you have to use in your study. Topic of health informatics. So I think uh, I'm not expert into that. But if you find a guide, uh, I, I will share this thing. Remember, many a time when students are there to select the topic, they are very novice. So a guide is always there. And there is one saying in English that youth guiding a youth is like a blind guiding a blind. This is why they have made a guide. There is a lot of energy in youths, but only the guide can be able to funnel it towards what is feasible and what is possible. Survey-based study can we do? Yes, you can do. Definitely. Can a cohort study be done? I don't think it can be because it is a kind of clinical trial. And if there is a dropout, then uh, you may have loss. So there is a question from student that regarding IAC approval, can we submit a declaration that it shall be submitted before the start of study? So I think uh, it is not going to be approved because this is a study of student, not a clinical trial. So college must take initiative uh, to approve the project. Rough questionnaire is okay. So I don't think it is uh, going to be okay because whatever question you put in proposal, same you are supposed to mention at the time of report. When it is the last day for proposal submission for second year MBBS rule? For all students, it is 30 June only. So can we select topics apart from given by ICMR? Yes, you can select on it, any topics because medicine is a deep sea and your guide will be uh, take you to journey towards any corner of it. Sir, can a student present or public the work, publish the work before submission of report to ICMR? Uh, I think it can be done, but you have to mention in that that this is under the consideration for approval of ICMR under STS project of this year. What are the opportunities for third and fourth year students so I think remember, STS is not the only thing. You can do many other extramural projects also. Even we are not uh, getting this, that why they are debarring the third and fourth year student, but it happens. Contextual faculty in cadre or associate professor can be guide. Uh, no, I think they cannot because the dean has to uh, sign on that application attestation form. So it is only for the permanent faculty. If already available drug pilot study is done by me, would it be called under clinical trial? Uh, that you have to think as a guide because clinical trial will be, I think, rejected outright only. Can a senior resident be a guide? No. Senior resident is not uh, there to be a guide. Why the clinical trial is not allowed? Because it is a project of students. So I think they have not given this opportunity of clinical trial. Third final uh, student cannot participate. 
who will fund our project if we need some funds. Uh, I think, as I said, the uh, facilities and cost must be borne by institution only. Or you can write to some funding agency. For example, we have the DMER, Department of Medical Education and Research. Most of the time, our studies are such that it has more human effort than money required. But I think most of the colleges running MEBS course, they are well furnished, I think, opportunity, furnished facility to support the research. What are the timelines for registration, proposal, project? So registration and proposal timeline is 30 June. So registration you should be doing as soon as possible. Proposal will not be accepted after 30 June. About the report and all, they have not given anything specifically. Ethical committee certificate, yes, it is always mandatory. You have to uh, get it done. Academic research scientists can guide a student. I think they can guide uh, if they are a permanent faculty. How many proposal can be sent from one department? I think it depends on the faculty. One faculty can guide one student. So if you have 10 faculty in that category of tutor to uh, professor, all can guide. For example, in my department, our uh, head of department, Professor uh, Mehta sir, is now a dean. So he is also guiding a student. Even Jasmine sir can guide. So he's also a professor. Yeah, there is a question. IEC is there, but is IRB also mandatory? I think IEC, IRB both are the same. IEC is Institutional Ethical Committee. IRB means Institutional Review Board. So both are the same. And I think all the colleges are having this mandatory. Yes, it is a mandatory to have it. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Would you like to have any question which is answered or I need to answer any question? Any specific format I said in a format you have to have less than one MB size, times two Roman, 12 font size, single spacing and justify. And all the headings as per those guidelines and the word limit must be followed. If you take the project, the dean, the college dean are not give permission. I think uh, it is up to the uh, context of dean only because the attestation form must be signed by student guide head of department as well as dean uh, there is one question uh jayas am i audible yes sir yes sir audible so there is one question regarding cohort even if you want to do the cohort study apply it but it will be as dr jayas said it will be difficult but you can apply it Secondly, all the document and ethics committee must be submitted uh, along with the form. So you have to be there, you have to collect all the things and then you have to submit. Uh, regarding the question of bioinformatics as well as AI, yes, you can use it. And you can have a project on AI. You can have a project on either AI or uh, informatics, no problem at all. See, you have to prepare it in a sense that it gets accepted. Uh, regarding recording, we will be uploading this on the YouTube and then we will be uploading the link. So please also tell about this IEC and IRB because many students are uh, asking whether it is mandatory. So I think it is a lead to be done by student, by the college only to approve all this project before 30 June. Otherwise, without IB certificate, they will not be able to finish the project in time. Guide should be particular department professor or the college, or it can be from private practitioner. I think uh, whether he is eligible or not, I already told, uh, if a dean is signing the attestation form, then guide must be eligible. What are other research opportunities? So for that, I think uh, you have to visit that uh, website, which I already mentioned, and that will guide you further. For data collection, can we use, remember, they have given the name of summer uh, break, but remember, all the colleges will not have the same break. So for example, if you have a span of one month, one year, 
at any two month you can do the data collection okay which website the same website on which you have to register because i have said that there are many multiple such uh, research grants given can dean be the guide yes sir it will be privilege of student if the dean is guide our dean mehta sir was uh, guide in one of uh, our department's uh, proposal so it will be rather a pleasure for student Yes, by 30 June, you have to get IRB approval because if it is not there, it means that your college is not approving it ethically and without IRB certificate, you cannot further uh, get the proposal processed. Any other question? Any other faculty wants to say anything? I'm just a junior faculty, but I just share what my experience is. Yes, you have to registration and proposal submission both before 30 June. So I think all the questions are almost addressed. So any of the faculty want to share anything because uh, there are a lot many faculty we can see right now in the meeting. They can also share their views and they can also give some tips to the student. Yeah, any panel questions or any uh, questions? So basically, actually, people are writing regarding two months, three months. So basically, NMC wants that you work for a two month. If your data collection is going more, uh, then there is a no problem. But you officially need to work only for two months. So I think uh, regarding contractual faculty, uh, ICMR is right now not allowing. And we will be sharing a recording of this. There is a question about that concept node. Actually, they have not mentioned about what is the research concept node. But I think if you look in the guidelines, it is same as proposal. So I think your proposal is considered as that research concept node. Research concept node. I will share the guideline of concept node in that group of ICMR STS. It is also available on the ICMR website under the headline of heading of uh, concept node, research concept node guidelines. Question about can we do comparison of two drugs? So I think the guide will be better in a position to answer because it is a clinical trial. So whether it is established or not, only the guide will be able to give subject specific input. Something about sample size. So sample size is what depends on type of study and everything. So there is nothing like a strict rule and strict number. Whatever your guide says, that is important. Permanent faculty, yes, but a tutor, associate professor, AP, professor, even dean can guide. They have to be permanent faculty. 
remember whatever topic you choose you have to work on it rather than that two months they have given six months so suppose if you finish it in four months or five months it's fine but it should be scientifically sound Uh, who is Mr. Tilak Raj? We have already answered your question that now if you are feeling it's too basic, you can increase it. So don't post question multiple times. You have already posted like around 10 times. So we have already answered previously also that you can definitely extend your project work or take help of your guide and submit it. Dr. Sunina Matlab, you have said that uh... Uh, in the guideline point number 17 and 80, if you don't get IEC approval, then you can have undertaking. But I think that uh, that will uh, not be accepted because all the research, if the college is not approving, then how the ICMR can approve it. So it is better not to take risk to give undertaking. Rather, we can ask our IIB committee to approve this project by taking a separate IIB committee meeting. Question where and where not to mention. So I think in your proposal, you know, they have A, B, C, D, three things. So you are not supposed to mention your name in proposal. Let me repeat, you are not supposed to mention your identifying detail in proposal. You have to just mention the registration number or ID number. Can we contact faculties about further query? I think Dr. Chinmay sir has made ICMR STS experience group only. So, uh, sir will be answering and uh, it is a kind of sharing your experience to each other. Is survey research okay? So, it is okay. Survey is a kind of research only. For your presentation publication, you don't need to take permission from STS. But whenever you present, at the bottom in acknowledgement, you can write that this study was funded and approved by ICM or STS under this, this heading. You are not supposed to mention them. But rather, if you mention your study is approved by ICMR, it will add a weight on it. So better to mention whenever you present or publish. How can we join Dr. Chinmay Sir's group? I think I will ask Sir as Sir comes online. There is a group for that. Yeah, I am sharing the link. I am sharing the link. Sir, I am looking on that only. Can we study on a specific material without clinical trials? Remember, if there is a clinical trial, the ethical committee will not approve it easily. So better not to take any topic. Because remember, whenever ICMR will review the topic, they will think that uh, this is a topic of undergraduate students. So if you are taking such topic, it will look like a project of guide more than that of UG student. So it is up to the guide to decide. So Jinmi sir just now shared the link. Please tell about concept note. Concept note is nothing but the uh, proposal guideline. That is concept note. I think I have shared one of the slide. And if uh, the video recording is shared, then you can go through it. Concept note is nothing but the proposal. The proposal. Attestation form you can get from the website. Or we can share the attention from also, I think, in our STS uh, group of WhatsApp chat. So in WhatsApp group, we will share this. I will also share that concept note guideline in PDF. Both this document I will share in that WhatsApp group.
what topic to choose i think it is uh, judged by only the student and guide combo only one will look feasibility other will look other aspects so you can choose any topic they have not given anything specific thing about do's and don'ts of research topics Can ethics committee people be guided? Yeah. They can if they are the faculty as per the norms. There is a question that already done survey can be a part of ICMR SCS. No. You have to do the new project. For already done project, you can go to PMKY. Am I right, Dr. Zayas? Yes, sir. I just want to let you know that I have to take. Oh. Dr. Jay, if there is no more question, yes, I sir. think uh, we can conclude the session. Yes, so let me thank you for giving this opportunity once again. And uh, I think uh, this will help students. And there's always a help in that WhatsApp group created by you. So I'm also thankful for that only. Thanks to Jasmin sir also. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jasmin sir, our deputy director for uh, supporting us. Thank you, ECO. Uh, and uh, thank you, Avdeh sir and our Pradyuman sir for giving uh, us this opportunity. Dr. Audesh sir. Sir, sir has just shared the feedback link. We request everyone to please fill the feedback link uh, for today's session. Uh, there is no certification, so don't ask for the certification based on the feedback link. Yes. Uh, again, thank you very much, Dr. Jayas, uh, for sir. an excellent session. We'll be sharing the recording soon in the group, uh, different WhatsApp groups. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, we can uh, end the session now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Chinmay, sir. And thank you, Dr. JS, for wonderful presentation. Thank you, everyone. So before winding up the session, I would like to request each and every participants to please fill the feedback form in the chat box. I have shared the link so we can improve our session for more knowledge and for enhancement of this upper study program and research related tasks. So thank you so much, everyone.